Rated E for everyone. Well, hello everybody and welcome to PlayStation's Crossbar, your home of everything FIFA and football related. Whether you're a casual FIFA player or a hardcore esports fan, we have got you covered over the duration of today's episode. My name is Brandon Smith and joining me, as always, for another episode of Crossbar is that man Richard Buckley. Rich, we're back. You brought out a shirt. The sun is shining uh, in the UK where we are. Is that, is that why the shirt is out? Yeah, it certainly is. We, we're getting into the summer months, Brandon. I'm, I'm kicking my feet up. I've got my sunglasses to my side. I love a little lemonade with the ice. But the FIFA action does not stop. I cannot wait to get into it because this is every FIFA fan's best dream right now. Team of the season is officially here. The Blues are back, baby. And I cannot wait to get talking about them. Yeah, there's so much to talk about in today's episode of Crossbar. As you've just teased some foot news. Of course, we'll keep you up to date with everything that's going on in the world of the PlayStation Open Series and competitive FIFA. So without any further ado, what are we waiting for? Let's jump straight into the news. So then, Richard, you are absolutely right. There is so much to talk about in the world of FIFA Ultimate Team at the moment. You took the words from my mouth team of the season is here it's not fully here yet but the first promo has dropped rich talk me through it because there are some incredible items that have already dropped into the game yes yeah, certainly we've been sprinkled so far we, we've been given an appetizer and we've got the main course coming very soon indeed but this is what we're starting with it's the team of the season community vote this was voted by the, the fifa fans on social media and across uh fifa database websites and as you can see, that is the team that we voted for. Harvey Barnes, David Alaba, Juan Basaka, three of the big players there, and Federico Valverde. I played against this guy. I actually matched in my weekend league, Dagonoff, uh, a top FIFA pro. He was using Valverde, and it's safe to say it did not go well for me. Uh, he did beat me five goals to two. Unbelievable uh, centre midfielder there. And there's actually a couple of sort of hidden gems in this team as well. Brandon, I know you had your eye on Goldson in particular. No, definitely. As a, as a fellow Brighton of Albion fan myself, a player that used to play for the club, you know, so much success now at Rangers. Also, we've got to talk about Ariola. I mean, he was always a goalkeeper that often popped up. You see the Nick Pope, you see Ariola. But then that team of the season, Ariola, I've played against, I think, in about 10 games in the last weekend league that I have played. He's here, there, and everywhere. He's absolutely remarkable. And just for those that talk, uh, sorry, just for those that might not be aware of Team of the Season, Rich, as we move on to the, the EFL Team of the Season, how does it work and when are we going to see, you know, Premier League players and, and Bundesliga players involved? So typically we'll see a different Team of the Season released every single Friday. That's what it's been in previous years. It's been the Premier League always first and then we'll recycle through the rest of the major leagues. All these major leagues will be accompanied by in quotation marks, a minor league. This might be the uh, Eredivisie, maybe the MLS. Potentially, um, you'll see a team from Liga Nos, the CSL. All these different minor leagues will be accompanied by a major league, such as the La Liga Santander, the um, League Un, Serie A, etc., etc. What we're expecting is Premier League to be coming next weekend. Uh, next week, I should say. So it will be. Friday, uh, I believe roughly around the 1st of May, um, uh, that sort of time, is when that will be released. And look, the Premier League has been fantastic this year. There's one player in particular that I cannot wait to see, and that could be Team of the Season, Suchek from West Ham. I'm expecting him to get a Team of the Season, and actually, I'm predicting all 90-plus stats on his six-face uh, uh, sort of item stats, pace, dribbling, shooting passing, defending and physical, all 90 plus. It sounds like a bit of a spoiler there for that team of the season uh, promo. Hopefully it will happen. It's always a good one as well because team of the season then sort of spills over into foot champions with all the reward selection there. But that's our take on team of the season. Only just got started and so many more weeks of that to come up, which we can't wait to see how that technically unfolds and what players from all the major leagues around the world get into that team of the season after a brilliant year of football. I mean, let's turn our attentions now to the Open Series, Richard. As we know, month after month, week after week, day after day, there are tournaments that you guys at home 
can compete in. And you might be thinking, how do I get involved? How do I sign up? And what am I playing for, Rich? Can you tell everybody? Yeah, it certainly is. The Open Series continuing throughout the rest of the spring and summer months. And it's a perfect opportunity to get involved with some FIFA esports action. You can compete for avatars, monthly rewards, cash prizes, and also in-game currency as well. And look, the best thing about it, it's free to enter. It's so easy to do. You go to compete.playstation.com. You sign up, you link your accounts, read the TOS, and you are in. It's as simple as that. You'll see the little PS4 tournaments tab on your PlayStation. It will instruct you where to go, who you're playing, what time you've got to check in for. It, it basically gives you a step-by-step -step instruction manual on how to compete. And look, if you can win one of those weekly qualifiers, if you can get in the top eight, top 12 in the weekly qualifiers, you qualify for the monthlies. And that's where the cash really starts to come in. You can earn yourself a little decent paycheck. Yeah, you can indeed if you're a very good FIFA player, but also I can speak from personal experience as not a good FIFA player. I've played in a couple of these tournaments and I can tell you right now they are so easy to do. As Richard said, you get notifications when your games are, it's easy to join. And uh, if you haven't yet, get yourselves involved, compete.playstation.com. But that's all really in today's new segment for Crossbar. We spoke about team of the season. As always, we'll highlight the open series because it's just so good not to get involved in. But anyway, that's it for the news. Let's head over to the competitive recap to see what on earth has been going on in the world of FIFA Esports. I mean, so where do we start now, Rich? Because we're at the stage of the year now in terms of competitive FIFA. It's called the FIFA 21 Global Series. Kicks off in December sort of time 2020. Hopefully, we'll have a FIFA E-World Cup final at the end of this year. But we're what, a qualifier four or five now? We're pretty much there. We're looking at playoffs, aren't we, near enough now? Yeah, we certainly are. I'll just give you a lay of the land. Each uh, region that we have, they have their sort of uh, regional qualifiers. They have their broadcasts. All those players put, get put into a rankings table. And now we're starting to see the culmination of those ranking tables take place. They will then compete at regional playoffs. And after the playoffs, a certain selection of players will qualify from the playoffs to compete in the FIFA E World Cup Grand Final. And that is what Mo Albon, a couple of years ago in the O2 Arena, $250,000. That is what everybody is playing for. But a player who wasn't able to compete uh, and didn't make it in FIFA 19, Brandon, has got his eyes on FIFA 21. And that's hashtag Tom. Yeah, I mean, he's picked up his first ever major tournament. Hashtag Tom. Qualifier number five. It came right down to the very wide. This man has been so, so consistent this year for, for club, for country. He's played in the Premier League and you can see the outpour of emotion uh, from him there. He won his first ever European major, which feels sort of strange, Richard, because he has been on top for so long this sort of last competitive year. Yeah, he really has. He's been a top, top player. He's number one in Europe right now. Over 4,500 Global Series ranking points. He's qualified for three different events. He's been representing uh, teams in the E Premier League. He's been an official England E Lion as well. Anything that he has done, he has uh, sort of passed with flying colours. However, this was the test for him. Could he win a regional qualifier? And he finally got that trophy. And look, another man who's been qualifying for numerous different events but not being able to get that stamp of approval was in South America and that was Paolo Neto. He finally got his trophy, finally got his hands on that winner's check, that winner's medal and what a win it was against Nicholas, a top player in his own right but Paolo Neto came out on top. I completely agree with you. I think a lot of this stuff was written in the stars in terms of Tom, you know, dominant all year long. We thought he was going to win a major. Paolo Neto, honestly, was in tears. We were commentating on this live when it did happen for Atlanta United. He took down Nicholas as well, the Iceman. You know very well, Richard. Everybody knows well how good Nicholas is as a PlayStation 4 representative. And to take him down in the grand final, that was massive from Paolo. Yeah, it really was. And just look at that emotion. Tears in his eyes. It's so good to see. It's... it's... It's what you want to sort of, it inspires you, does it? When you see that, it, just look how much emotion can come out of a player when they win and they finally get over that hurdle that was sort of obstructing their path, you've got to say, in terms of winning. And he's finally got over it. And right now, he, he could be a top player 
going into those playoffs and potentially even further in the E World Cup. However, there's plenty more winners, Brandon, and we're going over to Asia now. Yeah, in East Asia, it was Lookman that picked up his first ever big major tournament. What a result it was in the end against Bazzinio in that grand final. And I think that's what the, the the global series is all about this year. It's a global, global series in terms of there's tournaments taking place all over the world. Asia split up into East Asia and West Asia. As you can see, that big moment, the man from Malaysia getting a huge tournament win under his belt. And then, as we said, we went over to West Asia where we saw, I believe, the, 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 the work rate will say this is... YT Harat Hai, the player ensured he got his massive result there in his first major tournament from uh, Saudi Arabia in that grand final against the Indian player, which we must say, uh, Charan, India, first time they've been eligible to play in the Global Series this year. He has been sort of taking uh, the Global Series by a storm in terms of how he's come onto the scene and how he's been so dominant. He, of course, will be at the playoffs, no doubt, which we'll speak about in just a, a couple of minutes' time. But great to see these stories unfolding. I think that was the big part of the Global Series this year. We're not at LAN events. Unfortunately, I'm not seeing your beautiful face every single week, Rich, in Romania or, or wherever it would be in the world. But more players are playing FIFA, more money's being won, and more stories are unfolding, especially on the PlayStation. Yeah, it's so, so good to see. We'll we'll finalise this little sort of winner's circle with George Adamu from North America. He finally got his victory. Uh, I think this was his fourth final he was in. And, and just look at this outpour of emotion when the final whistle does go. Such a good moment. It's... Uh, it's just that that sense of victory, sense of being the best. You can't top it. And uh, George Adamu with a win to his name. Quite a sort of a mix-up because it was a Joxan dominated region, North America, wasn't it? And George Adamu putting his name right in amongst it. Yeah, and he's won every single qualifier on the build-up to that jock sound. I mean, he came out on social media and said, I couldn't win them all. He was a player that we did speak to in our last episode of Crossbar. Massive from Georgia Derby. We know Mike LaBelle very well, someone we've worked on shows with before. And uh, I know for a fact that Mike, you know, certainly taken him under his wing and everybody involved with New York Red Bulls has ensured that, you know, Georgia Derby has come into the scene and, you know, come in with, with flying colours because he has been playing so, so well. And if you are a fan of North American FIFA, well, there's one more qualifier left to be played. That coming up in just a few weeks' time. So make sure you do tune into that one uh, to see how that one will unfold. And then by that point, Rich, I mean, all the qualifiers are done. What's next to hear you ask? Well, playoffs. Playoffs are on the agenda, aren't they? Yeah, they certainly are. We're going to kickstart the playoffs May 15th, 16th with Oceania and then all of the other playoffs coming up in June and July. We'll give a closer look on those playoffs and also the E-Champions League in a future episode of Crossbar. Yeah, me and Richard will be on those to give you guys the full rundown of how they do break down and how they go. Of course, ending with Europe playoffs, back-to-back -back weekends. I cannot wait for that one. Anyway, that's enough for the competitive recap. So much to talk about, so much to unfold, and still so many players emerging onto the scene, even this late into the FIFA 21 Global Series. So I think that means, Rich, it's time for your tips. So let's jump into that next segment of today's show for Richard's Tips. Well, Rich, to be honest, uh, I'm going to speak for myself here and maybe people that are watching. I'm in a bit of a, a struggle at the moment. I mean, you know, Ultimate Team has been wearing me down at times in, in terms of weekend league. I just cannot seem to get gold one. And with Team of the Season now around the corner as well, I mean, it just feels more difficult, more harder to grind out those wins. And what's your tip about today? Yeah, I've, I've gave you gameplay before. I've gave you sort of formation guides some of the the better formations i've gave you tips on how to grind two icons maybe what you should be looking at in the objectives tab but today we're going back to basics and i'm going to show you one of if not the best formation the formation that a lot of the pros are using when hashtag tom won that trophy other couple of days ago this was the formation that he was using it's a rich tips classic the 442 second variation and i'm going to show you the formation the tactics and the instructions make sure you get a pen and paper and note this down because it will get you that extra couple of wins in weekend league this could be potentially one of my greatest tips ever in the history of crossbar because hopefully for everybody at home i'm going to be getting you an extra one two maybe even three wins on weekend league to clinch those all important 
Team of the Season reward. Yes, that's right. If you didn't know, we're in Team of the Season right now, meaning that if you hit Gold 2, you get a guaranteed Major League Team of the Season player in each of your picks. So, firstly, very best of luck to everybody at home. And now, let's get into the custom tactics. It's going to be a 4-4-2 second variation. You can see the defensive and offensive tactics right there balanced on the defense with four width and four depth on the offense it's going to be four width it's going to be five players in box three blotches on the corners and only one on the free kicks now the important bit these are the custom instructions on each individual player what you want you want your two strikers stay central and stay forward on the pair of them so you're going to see me do it right here, just in, in live, so you can see that this is all 100% genuine. Diata out wide, and also Sadio Mane. These are the pacey players. They want to get in behind. They want to give you the extra pass on the offensive end of things. Get into the box for crosses on both of these two. Stay wide. One of them get in behind. One of the players just on balance. You don't want both players playing forward at the same time. Two CDMs. One on cut passing lane, stay back. And your more offensive player, just on cover centre. That's Bruno Fernandes' team of the year for me personally. On your fullbacks, this is where the 4-4-2 comes into its own. Stay back while attacking and overlap on both fullbacks. Give you lots of options going forward, lots of potential ways to attack, and hopefully lots of great pack pulls in your near future. So there we have it, another one of Richard's tips that I certainly will be noting some of those tips down. Hopefully it can get me through a very difficult team of the season patch where, you know, as you said, everyone's going to be really grinding out those extra wins to try and get those extra red picks in their team. And uh, Rich, hopefully it will give people those extra couple of wins. That's the plan of these tips. I think for a lot of people at home that watch these shows, they certainly have helped people over the long run, I'd like to say. Yeah, I just think as well in regards to weekend league and tips, um, just try and keep you calm. It's a mental battle as well. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Make sure that you, you're spacing out your games, take your time. And if you are getting stressed out, if you are getting a little bit angry, just step away from the PlayStation, step away from the console, take a few minutes and then come back at a later time. There's no reason to rush all your games, to, to cram all your games in and pick up unnecessary losses. That's probably one of the biggest tips that I could give. Just keep your calm and you will find yourself picking up extra wins and hopefully getting to 17 wins out of 30 so you can get those guaranteed Major League Red Picks. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, as much as we've had fun on today's episode of Crossbar, that will bring us to a halt. We've spoken about Team of the Season, the start of a very exciting promo. No doubt one of my favourite promos of the year. We've recapped, of course, the Open Series. If you haven't got involved in that yet, make sure you do compete.playstation.com. And I think we just spoke about so much FIFA, Rich, in terms of there's so much competitive FIFA happening right now. I cannot wait for these playoffs to come around the corner and then we'll be at a FIFA E-World Cup and hopefully we'll have another PlayStation champion at some point. Yeah, fingers crossed. All that to come, plus much, much more. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for another episode of Crossbar already. It's, uh, I love these. Coming thick and fast to get time to talk about FIFA Esports and also reflect back on what we've missed in the last three to four weeks. And uh, yeah, top, top stuff. And can't wait to uh, to get involved, Brandon. Yeah, always a pleasure working alongside you, Richard Buckley. He's been Richard Buckley. I've been Brandon Smith. That has been another episode of PlayStation's Crossbar. Until next time, all we can say is goodbye, and we'll see you very soon for another episode of Crossbar. See you later.